yippee ki movie lovers, it's Jan here. The 14th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Doctor Strange brings the eponymous superhero's origin tale to the big screen and at the same time sneaks in a good number of Easter eggs to the comic books and the wider MCU. In this video I've put together all the Easter eggs and references I could spot in the movie. As always, do let me know in the comments below any other cool Easter eggs you spotted too. Just before I get stuck in, I'm running a giveaway for this awesome hardback book from DK called The Mysterious World of Doctor Strange. It's packed with over 100 70 pages of illustrations and info and showcases many of the weird and wonderful characters, monsters, demons and demigods that have appeared in Marvel's Doctor Strange comics over the years. For a chance to win a copy all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment or reply to a comment on this video. And just a quick warning that there will be spoilers in this video so if you're not ready for that click here to watch my spoiler free review of the movie. The art of Steve Ditko's Doctor Strange comics was a major influence and reference point for the look of the Dark Dimension and the multiverse that we see during Stephen Strange's Magical Mystery Tour and during his confrontation with Dormammu. Interestingly, over a year was spent on previs and concept art for the new dimensions that we see in the film. And the filmmakers themselves have said they very much wanted to pay tribute to Ditko's original weird and wonderful artwork from the 60s to make sure their movie was indeed strange. A more recent comic book influence was 2007's The Oath, with the movie reflecting the fun tone of that miniseries. But there are also some specific Easter eggs to that particular comic book story arc. In the movie, Christine Palmer has to operate on a badly injured Strange, just as Night Nurse does in the comic. And in both the movie and the comic, there's a humorous scene where Strange suddenly appears as an astral projection of himself during the procedure. And the number 280, which we see briefly on the back of Strange's broken watch, is also an easter egg to the comic Doctor Strange Volume 2, Issue 80, where Strange materialises as his astral form to doctors operating on his injured body. Unlike in the comics, Rachel McAdams' character Christine Palmer doesn't get the moniker of Night Nurse in the movie. In the comics, the name Night Nurse is more of a shared moniker taken on by various characters who look after injured superheroes. In the movie, Christine Palmer is a doctor and not a nurse, which is perhaps a nod to the joke in the Oath comic that another Night Nurse character makes about why she has that alias even though she's actually a doctor. Still, the film makes a subtle allusion to the character of Night Nurse as we see Christine Palmer become the go-to doctor to treat super-powered individuals like Doctor Strange and the Ancient One when they arrive at the hospital. And Strange and Palmer's previous romantic history in the film tips its hat to the romance between Doctor Strange and Night Nurse at the end of The Oath. By the way, if you enjoy Marvel's Netflix TV shows, you'll know that there have been lots of allusions to Rosario Dawson's character Claire Temple as being Night Nurse. The character of Nicodemus West is also taken from the Oath series, where, like in the movie, he's also the Doctor who operated on Strange's hands after his accident. And Marvel's graphic novel, Into Shambhala, gets a cheeky Easter egg in the form of the Wi-Fi password at Kamar Taj. Doctor Strange's on-screen origin story borrows significantly from the comics, with his depiction as an arrogant surgeon who turns down patients, his car accident and going penniless trying to find a cure for his hands until he discovers Kamar Taj and the Ancient One. The address of the New York Sanctum Sanctorum, 177A Bleecker Street, is a nod to the same address in the comics, which was actually also the address of an apartment that Marvel comic book writers Roy Thomas and Gary Friedrich once shared. Given that by the end of the movie 177A Bleecker Street becomes the new residence of Doctor Strange, it's interesting that it has a similar ring to Sherlock's 221B Baker Street. Benedict Cumberbatch of course plays Sherlock in the BBC TV series and I found it intriguing that also some of the music that plays during the film and over the credits had a Sherlock theme music meets Pink Floyd vibe to it. And during the scene where Strange is driving along the winding road, you can clearly hear Pink Floyd's track Interstellar Overdrive. It's hardly surprising that their psychedelic rock features in the movie soundtrack. After all, back in 1968, the band used artwork from the comic Strange Tales on the cover of their second album, A Saucer Full of Secrets. And much more recently, Benedict Cumberbatch actually performed the song Comfortably Numb on stage in London with former Pink Floyd guitarist and vocalist David Gilmour. The Cloak of Levitation from the comics gets a bit of an update from the iconic comic book design, though it keeps the main red colour, losing the gold colours except for the clasps around the top. And the Cloak's animated character has shades of the magic carpet from Disney's animated movie Aladdin about it. The Seal of Ashanti appears in the movie and the skylight for each of the Sanctum Sanctorums on the doors and on the luminous globe at Kamar Taj, as well as on the Eye of Agamotto. In the comics, the Vishanti are a union of three mystical godlike beings who protect the Earth. One of the Vishanti is Agamotto, who gets name-checked in the film as the father of the mystic arts and the first Sorcerer Supreme. The amulet, the Eye of Agamotto, is named after him and in the comics has various powers, while in the MCU it's used by Doctor Strange to manipulate time. And at the end of the film, 
Dong Wong reveals that the eye is actually one of the six Infinity Stones, specifically the Time Stone. It's curious too that the movie seems to be setting the MCU up for Thanos to come and take the Infinity Stone by just leaving it in a room that was already breached by Kaecilius and his zealots earlier in this film. The book from which Kaecilius rips the pages he needs to summon Dormammu is the Book of Cagliostro, a reference to the mystical book in the comics which Mordo used to travel back in time. The Staff of the Living Tribunal, which Mordo wields while training with Strange, is possibly a reference to the Staff of Polar Power from the comics, which has the ability to absorb evil magical energy. But it's also an easter egg to the Living Tribunal, a cosmic being that protects the multiverse in the comics. This is the first time that the name has been mentioned in the MCU, and it might have implications for Infinity War, as in the comics the Living Tribunal has power that exceeds the Infinity Gauntlet. Mordo's vaulting boots of Valtor are a nod to the comic book entity Valtor, who grants power to anyone who can invoke him, and thanks to those boots in the movie, Mordo seems to be able to leap a great distance. Wong's weapon that he grabs to defend the Hong Kong Sanctum is the Wand of Watum. We don't really see what it can do in the movie, but in the comics it can defend against mystical attacks as well as open portals to other dimensions. The luminous orange coloured magic that Doctor Strange uses is derived from an energy force called Eldritch Light. It can be harnessed as slash and shield type weapons or as an Eldritch Whip which we often see him use. And the luminous orange ropes that Kaecilius' zealots used to bind the librarian at Kamartage in mid-air look like the MCU's version of the comic's Crimson Bands of Cytorak, a spell that contains a prisoner within its bands. When Strange tries to run and grab an axe in the Sanctum during his battle with Kaecilius, it's likely a nod to the axe of Angerumus, a weapon that Doctor Strange acquired in the 2015 relaunch of a new Doctor Strange comic book series. And the artifact in the Sanctum which Kaecilius mocks Strange for not knowing what it does is the Brazier of Bong Goliath. In the comics, the Brazier allows interdimensional travel between realms. Master Hamir, who Strange confuses for the Ancient One upon his arrival at Kamartage, is an updated version of Hamir from the comics, who is an assistant to the Ancient One. The wider MCU also gets a couple of references, with Wong name-dropping the Avengers as defending the world against physical threats, whereas the Masters safeguard the world against mystical threats. And we also see the Avengers Tower in some of the shots of the New York skyline. There's a possible reference to Iron Man 2 during the phone conversation Strange has while driving, just before his crash. Billy, who is telling Strange about possible new patients, mentions a 35-year-old Marine Colonel that crushed his lower spine in some kind of experimental armour. This could be a reference to the Hammertech test pilots injured when the Iron Man rip-off suit he was wearing twisted 180 degrees on his upper half while his legs were stuck where they were. Tony Stark played the video of the injury during the Senate Armed Forces Committee hearing in Iron Man 2. Marvel legend Stan Lee cameos in the scene where Doctor Strange and Mordo are tipped sideways onto a bus by Kaecilius as he folds the streets to stop them escaping through a gateway. Lee is riding on the bus and reading The Doors of Perception by Aldous Huxley, laughing at the craziness of it all. The Doors of Perception is a book about what Aldous Huxley experienced after taking the drug mescaline in 1953, and the reference is a tongue-in-cheek nod to the psychedelic aesthetic of the movie and the original Ditko comics. A surprising cameo you may not have noticed is that Benedict Cumberbatch performed the motion capture for Dormammu, and casting Cumberbatch in the role is kind of apt when you consider that director Scott Derrickson has said that Dormammu is a kind of ultra-inflated version of Strange, an ego run amok. By the way, the design of Dormammu in the movie with a kind of folded face is a visual shout out to the way that Dormammu was originally drawn by Ditko with stripes in the character's head. There's a small cameo for the character of Daniel Drum, who's the master of the New York Sanctum before Kaecilius arrives and kills him. Daniel Drum, who's also dead in the comics, has a brother called Jericho, aka Brother Voodoo, who takes on the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme from Doctor Strange in the New Avengers comics. There's a blink and you'll miss it cameo for Tina Minoru, played by Linda Louise Duane. She appears briefly with the Ancient One and Daniel Drum, and later momentarily in the Hong Kong Sanctum. Tina Minoru is the mother of Nico Minoru, a lead character in Marvel's The Runaways comics, which are being adapted as a Hulu TV series. Ben Collins, aka The Stig from Top Gear, is actually the stunt driver for Doctor Strange's car crash. The mid credit scene features a cameo from Chris Hemsworth as Thor and teases a Doctor Strange appearance in the upcoming Thor Ragnarok. In the scene, Doctor Strange is wearing a pair of yellow gloves, a hat tip to the golden coloured gloves that Ditko drew for Doctor Strange. You can also click here for a more detailed analysis of that scene, or you can check the link later in the video description below. 
Mordo's turn to the dark side in the post credit scene links up the character to his classic villain role of Baron Mordo in the comics, and he's dressed in muted green colours in the film, a hat tip to his comic book counterpart's classic green costume. There's also more references to Mordo's villainous background at earlier points in the movie, for example when Mordo says to the Ancient One, I wanted the power to defeat my enemies, and when the Ancient One comments to Strange that Mordo's soul was forged by the fires of his youth. You can click here for more details on the post credit scene and what it means for a Doctor Strange sequel and I'll also put a link in the video description below. There's a fair bit of product placement in Doctor Strange, but there's a Marvel-related one for Synchrony Bank, whose name appears on the building that gets split and warped in two during one of the mind-bending action scenes. Synchrony Bank is Marvel's official partner and issuer of the Marvel MasterCard. And finally, over the movie's end credits, we hear the theme called the Master of the Mystic End Credits, which is a nod to the second series of Doctor Strange comics, which was subtitled Master of the Mystic Arts. Now I'd love to hear about any other easter eggs and references that I missed, and do let me know what you thought of the movie too. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment for a chance to win this awesome hardback book, The Mysterious World of Doctor Strange, and do turn on your notifications for Flicks in the City to make sure you stay up to date with all my videos. If you enjoyed this I appreciate you liking and sharing it, and why not take a look at more videos from my Doctor Strange and easter eggs playlists? You can click any of the links below to check those out. Thanks for watching and see you next time, you be guy a movie. Lovers.